Hello everyone, it's Dawn and welcome back to my channel. Well, today this is a request video. Somebody asked me if I would make a letter rack. She was telling me, one of our ladies, our lovely ladies was telling me, she has her mum and her mum wants a letter rack, a pretty letter rack, to go on her sideboard. It's quite nice to know that someone other than me still got a sideboard. But this is, so this is what I've come up with. I had a little play around and this is what I finally come up with. And so it stands, I've, I've laid it flat so that you can see what it looks like because my camera is above, but it stands like that. And you can take your letters or your mail, pop them in there like that. And it sits very prettily on your sideboard or your table or bedside table or wherever it is you want to keep it. So I've made this in a floral and I'm actually going to send this off to somebody, but I'm going to make another one on video to show you how it's done. But this time I'm going to do a different colour theme. So we're going to do more of an oceanic one. So I know that's a bit of a posh one, but it's not really posh, it just sounds posh. So you'll see what I mean as we go along. So I'm just going to pop that and our envelopes to one side because I'll let you into a little secret. They were just empty envelopes. There wasn't any real mail. So I'm going to start with the, the board, the main board, the standing board, whatever you call it. So baseboard, that's the word I was after. So you will need a board, if I can find my notes, because they're not in the right order. And that needs to be seven, I think it's seven, baseboard, sorry. Eight and a half, eight and a quarter by three and a half. So you need a baseboard, which is eight and a quarter by three and a half inches. Now all of these measurements will be in the description below the video by the time we're done. By the time you get to see this video, all the, all the measurements and all of the score lines and everything else you will need will be in the description below this video. Just click on the little tab that says more and it will drop down. You might have to click another little button that says more, but if you just drop it down, click on more, you'll find everything you need. And so we're going to get on with that and you will need a cover for it. Now the cover is roughly an inch bigger so that will be nine and a quarter by four and a half. And again, they'll be in the description box. So don't worry about writing it down. Now, just to make life a little bit easier, I've put some double sided tape on here. And we're just going to take that off or take the backing tape off anyway. And this is a double sided. I'm not particularly keen on that side, I have to say, but I love that side. So I'm just going to lay that down like that. I'm going to show you how we get this nice with a nice neat edge. So this is this will be the front eventually. So we're going to turn it over. And if I can find my scissors, oh there they are. That was a bit of luck. So I'm going to find my scissors. And what we're going to do, we're just going to cut it not quite to the corner. Don't cut it right on the corner because otherwise you'll have a gap but cut it just a smidgen away from the corner of the board. This is mount board, by the way. This is white mount board, but don't worry about the colour because by the time we finish with it, you won't see it. If you don't have mount board, you can use chipboard. I know some people like to use chipboard. I don't particularly, but that's just me. If you don't have chipboard or mount board, you can use cereal boxes. So just, I would suggest stack about three or four together. So there are lots of ways you can do this. And I'm going to use a red runner tape just to make life quicker. And I'm going to put that to begin with on the ends. And what we're going to do, we're going to fold that up like that. We'll do the long sides first. It doesn't really matter which way round you do it. It's just the way I prefer to do it. And then just tuck in, use your fingernails and tuck in the ends. Bring it round or turn it round and pop that up there like that and then we're going to fold that over there now as you'll see we do have an ugly white gap which isn't particularly attractive so you'll need a back to cover that now if what i did with mine is i cut it exactly the same size to begin with of the board which was eight and a quarter by three and a half and then what i did was i cut off just a tiny little shred, about, a, oh, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So rather than give you eighths of an inch and things like that. So just cut, what I would suggest you do to make life easier for yourself, is cut a piece that measures eight and a quarter by three and a half. 
and then just cut I would suggest about that much off so about an eighth of an inch on two sides and if that's still not enough just do another eight an eighth, eight, an eighth of an inch so we're not going to use that side I'm going to use that side and what we're going to do for that this is going to be the underside for that I'm going to use some glue and this is just a glue stick it's quite a strong glue stick actually it's I was quite surprised I was out shopping the other day in my local Sainsbury's where I do my grocery shop that's not a plug by the way it's just where I happen to go because it's the closest supermarket to us and I saw these Sainsbury's own brand glue sticks and I thought okay I'll give them a go do you know what they're really good I like them I'm surprised I like them because usually home brand adhesives I don't like usually but I do like this one so I was quite surprised at that, but you can use whatever glue stick you normally use. You don't have to use this one, of course. You can use whatever works for you. Normally I would use a print stick, but I couldn't find any. So that's our baseboard already made. Now I'm going to cover. You will need another board, another white board or whatever board you're using. And this needs to be, this is the backboard, and this needs to be seven by seven inches. And again, I have got double-sided tape on it. And I'm going to take, oops, hopefully not the tape off as well, just the backing. I'm hoping just to take the backing tape off, not the whole lot. That would be funny, wouldn't it? So that's all right. We'll keep going. And we're going to do a similar process, actually, folks. We're going to just choose our paper. In fact, I have chosen the same paper. So I'm just going to put this. I've got a bin just behind me, a waste paper bin. So I'm just going to pop that up there. Hopefully, hopefully goodness, it doesn't fall off. And again, I've got another piece, which is about an inch bigger, so it's eight by eight, roughly. It doesn't have to be exact, as long as it's long enough or big enough to cover the sides. It needs to be bigger than your main baseboard, so that you've got enough to cut off and turn over. So the, the size doesn't really matter, as long as it's bigger than your main bit, so that you've got flaps. So again... We're going to cut the edges like this, so just like that, as they say. And we're just going to cut so that it's a little bit away from the edge. If we cut up to the edge, we're going to get a white gap. So we'll cut away from the edge, just a little bit. We'll get rid of the debris as we go, so we don't end up putting debris in the finished product. Because that wouldn't be very good. And again, I'm just going to pop the scissors out of the way for a second. I'm going to use my red runner tape. And I'm just going to very quickly run it all the way around. Someone was telling me that they really like the sound of this. So if the person that said that they like the sound of it is, is watching, I, I hope you're enjoying it. I know for some people they find it really irritating. So if that sound irritates you, then I apologise. But we won't be using it all that much more, just a couple more times. So we'll just, again, go around and stick the edges so that they're nice and fastened and stuck down. Oh, I think there's a bit that didn't quite get the tape. That's all right, we'll just tuck that in. Doesn't matter, there's going to be another bit on top of it in a, in a minute. So, again, what I've done for my back piece, again... This is a double-sided tape, a uh, double-sided paper. Both sides are really pretty, but I've decided to use that side. And again, what I've done is I've cut it at seven by seven and cut off just about a little bit all the way on two sides. Or you can do it all the way around if you wish, depending on how big a border you want. Of course, you can do it exactly so that it measures, but I like that little bit of border, even on the back. I like that little bit of border. And again, I'm going to, I'm not going to use the tape runner this time so if the noise of the tape runner annoys you you don't have to worry because we're not using that well not this time anyway i'm going to use my glue stick again but make sure you get right into those edges and the corners because we don't want this lifting so we'll pop that on there doesn't really matter which way it goes this is just on the back just for something someone's going to be looking at the back at some point so we'll just stick that down nice and neat. And then, now I was just wondering which way around to do this. So you've got a nice backboard now, and you've got a nice baseboard. 
So I think what we'll do next, we'll deal with the bit that the letters go in. Now this one is where it does get a bit tricky, so I've got to make sure I get it right. You need a piece that measures 12 by six and a half. And what you need to do, it doesn't really matter which way I put this round, you need to score at one and two and a half on that side, and then one and two and a half at each of the short ends. And then on the long end, you need to score at one and a half. And again, all of this will be down below, so don't worry about it. Now, this is where you will need a pair of scissors. And what we will do actually, is we'll just fold, give our, you don't have to give it too much of a burnish, but it will actually be easier if you can see where your folds are. So we'll just fold that up. I have done a little tiny weeny bit of cutting, which is more for my benefit than anyone else's so that I know where it is. So these little bits at the end, you've, at the bottom, you will have two little bits like that. Now they need to be chopped off because you don't need those. So we'll cut those off there so that we know what we're doing and so that they don't get in the way. And the next, the only other piece of cutting you need to do, the one where we've scored at one and a half, I'm not sure if you can see the one and a half score line from there, but just cut up to it to where the score lines meet. Don't go past it. So just cut up to that part there. So find the score line and just cut up to it like that. Now what we're going to do, we're going to, these two bits, these are the tabs, or two of the tabs anyway, and we're going to fold those in and we are going to take our red runner tape again. So just put a couple of bits and it looks like we're about to run out. That's all right, I've got another one. And what we do, we take, do it, I'd suggest you do this one at a time, one corner at a time, pull it up like that. If I pull it to the camera like that and give it a tuck in there and then do the same on the other end, just pull that up and stick it like that. So you now have a piece like that and you need to fold those. We don't need to fold them in. Well, you can fold them in, but don't stick them down because we're not sticking them down just yet. Now, before we do that, we've got another bit of measuring to do. This will bring this bit to seven inches and you need to measure from where you folded it. So from that first or the second fold line, I suppose it would be. So from this corner here, you need to measure in three and a half inches and one and a half down. So this will all be included, don't worry. And then what I've done, I'm not sure if you can see it, but actually if I get a pencil, I, you can see what I've done. I'll try and draw it a bit stronger because we don't, these are cut lines. I've cut or I've drawn a line from the corner to the centre point. So hopefully you can see that. I can't in my screen, but I'm hoping you can. So I'm going to turn that round and what we're going to do is we're just going to cut down that bit that, along that line first. It's easier if you cut one line first. Don't try and turn around and go back the other way. Just come at it from the other side and carry on cutting until the thing falls out. Like that. Perfect. Now, the other thing I'm going to do very quickly see if I can find another red runner tape and I can perfect you don't need to do this it's not absolutely necessary in fact I think I need a smaller pair of scissors just to make it a little bit neater where that point is I would suggest again this is optional just cut a tiny weeny cut like that just a tiny weeny one and fold it if you don't want to do this then you don't have to but and you might just want to cut a little bit at the corner as well. But again, if you don't want to, please feel free to skip this part. All it does, it makes it a little bit tidier. So what we do is we fold that down. Try not to do what I've just done and te tear it. So again, I am going to use my red runner tape because this is not going to be carrying any weight. It's just, it's really for decoration. So we're just going to fold that down like that. And we're going to do the same 
on the other side. But as I say, you don't have to do this bit if you don't want to. So I'll just run that there. You can use glue if you want to. I'm just using tape because it's on the table and it's quicker. So now what we're going to do, this is where hopefully it will stop to look like what it's meant to look like. So we're going to bring this over here and we're going to glue this to our base. Or we're going to stick this to our base, I should say. Now, before we do, it might be better to, because we need to take, again, you don't have to do this bit. I've decided to taper the edge, but again, you don't have to. So measure up, or I'm going to eyeball it, about between half and one inch. So I haven't measured mine. I know I should do, but I didn't. So I'm just going to eyeball that. Sorry, guys, can you see that? Or oh, you should be able to. And then in the middle, I'm going to put a little mark. And again, we're going to make a line. We're going to draw a line, roughly. And it's, this will be a lot more accurate if you measure it. But I didn't, so it probably won't be terribly accurate. But good enough. And then what you need to do, you need to take a strong pair of scissors because we are cutting through board or if you're using cereal box, several layers and cut along those pencil lines. So this is where it can get a bit tricky. Actually, I might do it that way. And if all goes, actually, do you know what? I'm going to find a better pair of scissors because those scissors are all right for cutting paper, but they're not much cut for cutting board. So I'm going to use my red ones. So we'll just... Yeah, that's <laughs> they're not much better, but they are a bit. So pop that out the way. And oh that's better. So we're going to draw and cut along there. But again, you don't have to do this bit if you don't want to. So let's just get the big scissors out of the way. And we really will this time stick that to there. Now again, well actually what we can do. So I've got my drawer with all my bits and pieces next to me. So I am going to actually put some double-sided tape on this because I don't want the thing coming off. So what we do is we just put a little bit down there like that. So, and we put a little bit down there like that. And we, actually that one will be too high, but that's all right. Take the backing tape off. And where it's too high, just roll it back a bit. If you put it too far, just roll it back. That's no problem at all. Pull the tape off. And then what we're going to do, I'll show you how we do the rest of it in a minute. We're going to just lay that. If I bring this over here a bit, let's just turn that round so that it's not a distraction. Turn that round there like that. Line that up with the bottom. Line the bottom of your box with the bottom of your backboard. Now I'm just going to spin it round and all we need to do, we need to pop our hand inside, just line it up, pop our hand inside like that and push it down. Now what you can do, if you don't put it down too tight in the meantime, or in the first place, you can gently lift it if it's not quite in the right place. But I'm not going to worry too much because it's not, it's not perfect but it's good enough. So there we go. Now, if you are worried about these little tabs showing, which they might do, I have taken a piece that measures five by seven. And what I'm going to do, oh, actually that needs to come down a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to just, it's fractionally too big. So I'm just going to cut just a tiny sliver off. And it's the same pattern as that. In fact, it doesn't really matter what side I use because that's a nice, it's a nice pattern either side. So I'm just going to put some glue on the back, glue stick on the back. So we're getting there, folks. It's going to be a bit of a longer one today than usual, but it's one of those projects where you've got a lot of measurements and if you rush through it, you'd never catch up. So I'm just going to slide that in there like that. This is really just to cover those tabs. But... I didn't have any more of this stuff, otherwise I'd have used that. But that's okay, it can be different at the top. No problem at all. Now, what we need to do, we're getting there. We really are getting there. This is where it starts to look like it. Because what we're going to do 
is we're going to fix this bit to our baseboard so that it sits nicely like that. So again, I'm going to use double-sided tape. I couldn't put it on beforehand because I hadn't made it up. So all I'm going to do is pop it on there like that. I'm going to put one piece on there like that and take the backing tape off. And then what I'm going to do is grab another piece, if it doesn't run away with me, <laughs> which it seems to be doing. It's all right, we'll just pop that to one side. And I'm going to slightly, I know you can't really see that, but I'm going to slightly overlap the first piece like that. Now that any bits that are too long, I would suggest you don't cut them off. Just get the backing tape off and fold it back over itself because any extra tape will give it extra strength. So we're going to bring our baseboard in and decide where we're going to put it. I'd say roughly in the middle. If you want it further back, you can. I'm going to try, or going to try, and get it roughly in the middle. That's not quite in the middle, but because I can't actually see whether it's in the middle or not from where I am. Oh, good enough. So then just put your fingers in like that, or your hands in, or you can run a ruler in, grab a pair of scissors and run it along. So there we go, that's our basic shell, if you like. And that's what it looks like now. Now it looks like a letter rack. Now, for the final decorations, you don't have to do this. If you've had enough of me talking, you can switch off. But if you want to see how I'm going to put the best of it together, I have found in my photo stock, which I've got loads of, I found some gorgeous fish, some photographs of fish. So I just printed them off and cut them out. And I, I'm going to use my red runner tape for this just to finish off because we need to move on and get this done quickly. So I'm just going to red, run some red runner tape over that and see if I can pick it up. And I'm going to stick that one because by sheer coincidence, I didn't realise this until just a second ago, they're facing opposite ways in opposite directions. So that's really good luck. So I'm going to stick that one coming down that way so the fin will be sticking up a little bit and that one will be actually it doesn't finish actually do you know what i think i've stuck that one upside down so i think that one needs to come off so that's all right yeah that one needs to come off i thought well it looked right when i did it the first time so that needs to go that side so that's this week's deliberate mistake and we're going to do exactly the same on the back of the other one. I've just printed this off onto photo paper so that it's nice and shiny. And that needs to go on there like that. And we have our little letter opener. Now, if you really want to be fussy, I found this gorgeous picture of a dolphin, which I absolutely love. I love dolphins. So I am going to use that. And I'm just going to run one more bit of tape on the, on his back, like that. And I'm going to pop that in there. I can't actually see what I'm doing. So I hope my head didn't get in the way then. Like that. So there you go. You've got a dolphin coming out the top and you've got two fish coming down the bottom. So there we go, guys. And when it stands up, it, I know you've got all the detail disappears when it stands up, but if I rock it backwards, you can see how it goes and hopefully I'm, I'm trying to grab all of the envelopes which I put right on the end of the table they would still all your letters will sit in there quite nicely like that so there you go guys there is our letter rack this one I did with an aquatic or oceanic feel and this one I did with a more floral type so I will let you decide which way you want it done and if you obviously you're doing this for a male you can swap out the papers and or for anybody for that matter swap out the papers to make them available or appropriate for whoever you're making this for so i hope you've enjoyed this one i know it's been a bit of a long one but i'm afraid it couldn't be helped so i hope you've been, i hope you have enjoyed it and got something from it and i will see you next time with another video and in the meantime thank you so much for watching take care have fun and as always, happy crafting. Bye bye for now.